Dude, my little dog. Alright, guys. Alright, you knew it had to happen. You knew I had to resurface out of the ashes of the collapse of everything here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, where I think it has been, what, good lord, two or three weeks since I was last on here. Uh, so the rumors of my death have been mildly exaggerated. <clears throat> I do have pneumonia, is what, uh, no, I do not have corona panic. I am not in love. Uh, I am just working my way into the grave here. But anyway, we are going to make an attempt. That our first ain't gonna happen roundup rant. I think it's been a month since I did an AGH rant. So here on Friday, June 14th, uh, I'm just gonna sit here and rant till I start coughing and then I'm just going to give it up if I can't get through a, a rant. And uh, so I better dive right in. And, uh, you know, guys, I, I was thinking of, of really doing a, a big rant on, on this latest uh, bullshit from, from this dude... Guterres at the United Nations, you know, I, I have never understood who the hell this dude is. I, I, I don't know what the hell he's smoking. Uh, he is certainly the uh, apocaloptimus king of the world. The guy is, is, is completely schizophrenic. He's batshit crazy. He understands, I guess, uh, that we are fucked, but he continues to claim that we're going to get, get out of this. He is the king of the ain't gonna happen apocaloptimus. How the hell he got to the head of the United Nations, I have no idea. And of course, his latest knee slapper is talking about how there is an exit off the highway to hell. Yes. <clears throat> oh boy. You know, Antonio Guterres. Uh, in the case of climate, we are not the dinosaurs. We are the meteor. We are not only in danger, we are the danger. But we're also the solution. Yes. And, uh, <clears throat> we are playing Russian roulette with our planet. We need an exit ramp off the highway to climate hell. And the truth is, the truth is, we have control of the wheel. Yes control of the wheel. So now we have 18 months, 18 months to save this world. That means by the end of 2025, which I think kind of dovetails the beginning of 2026 with some other predictions of the end of the world, which we don't talk about here on this channel. Yes. So, uh, we have 18 months to save the world, according to Tony. Pulling back from the front, from the brink, quote, is still just about possible. Yes. Uh, and there you go. You know, the guy really, I, I don't know uh, whether I, I want to laugh or cry. Uh, we have what we need to save ourselves. Yes. So all we need to do, all we need to do, you know, whenever you see these words, what we need to do, you can just automatically 
say ain't going to happen because whatever we need to do ain't going to happen. So if you ever see the words, what we need to do to save this planet, it ain't going to happen. Slash emissions, protect people and nature from climate extremes. Yes, don't forget, clamp down on the fossil fuel business. Uh -huh. All in for climate action. Yes, speaking to climate activist. Yes. You are on the right side of history. You speak for the majority. Keep it up. Don't lose courage. Don't lose who. Don't lose who. Don't lose who. Don't lose who. We the peoples. We the peoples versus the polluters and profiteers. We can win. Now is the time to mobilize. Now is the time to act. Now is the time to deliver. This is our moment of truth. Shut the fuck up. Does this fucker actually believe one word coming out of his fat mouth? You know, I just listen to these people. I hope I'm not going to piss off anybody for this. You know, I was listening to this interview with this guy, Roger Hallam, a, a, a couple of nights ago, and it, 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 just rolling my eyes. What was Elliot's comment on there? Roger Hallam uh, is the opposite of a doomer. Uh, you know, Roger Hallam in there trash-talking doomers on a doomer channel, and uh, then he, uh, then, you know, and just starts all of this laundry list of shit that we need to do uh, that ain't going to happen. Uh, you know, I, I held my tongue as long as I could, and I had to leave the comment, yeah, 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 Roger, sounds great. Ain't going to happen. And, and, you know, then I, then I go on here to medium.com and this fellow B, who I'm always, uh, you know, holding up B. I think he's, what's he called? The Honest Sorcerer. One of the great minds of how fucked we are uh, on medium.com. And, and I, you know, he starts out talking sense. Then, then, then even B... Uh, falls into this this long fucking bullet list of what we need to do uh, to, to, to save this planet uh, when he knows goddamn well uh, that everything on that list uh, it, it, it is bullshit. Uh, it ain't gonna happen. It ain't going to happen. B knows goddamn well it ain't going to happen. Roger Hallam knows goddamn well it ain't going to happen. I'm pretty sure Tony Gutierrez knows it ain't going to happen. So why do they keep talking this shit? This unadulterated horseshit. They know it's horseshit. They, they, they sit there, what's the term, verbal masturbation. They're spilling their seed all over the ground. It's not impregnating anyone. It's not starting in, in any fucking future generations of anything. Uh, they, they, they know that, that they're just out there just spouting this shit uh, into a Category 5 hurricane. Uh, people aren't going to do a goddamn thing uh, about anything, uh, and we're fucked. They all know this. And, um, but this is just a long segue. I think I've, uh, I've had a uh, share the work of this fellow on Medium before. He's not real prolific. Uh, this fellow named Eric Michaels. I think I did one by Eric fairly recently. But uh, I think Eric Michaels, this was actually written uh, back in February. And I hope I have not already done this rant. I'm a little foggy headed uh, with all of these antibiotics and these damn uh, steroids. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping 
I'm not repeating myself and because uh, I feel like uh, I, Eric wrote something similar to this and maybe this is his follow-up article titled uh, back in February uh, what are the most popular forms of hopium if you're wondering uh, the most popular forms of hoping hopium are silly annoying stupid and batshit crazy so uh Anyway, I'm, I'm going to read. I'm just going to read this excellent article by Eric Michaels. I'll put the link on here for those of you who can read it because I'm probably going to start coughing in the middle of it. Uh, but but Eric Michaels has done as well as anybody the best ain't going to happen essay I've ever read. And excuse me if I've read this before. <clears throat> Recently, I asked a question to get some new insights and ideas about reducing ecological overshoot that are widely known to be what we call hopium. I was looking for something new that I hadn't heard of before, but nothing new to me was brought to the forefront. I'm thinking that might be the article that I remember reading. Um, I have mentioned electrification and associated offshoots, non-renewable, renewable energy, EVs, batteries, supercapacitors, hydrogen, nuclear, fission, and fusion energy, all based on the imaginary energy transition many times before, so I won't bother going into those, seeing how I've pointed out how the entire electric grid is uns unsustainable. I have gone into a detailed explanation of why hydrogen will never amount to much, and he has links to all of his previous essays. Explaining why energy efficiency is dead in the water as a way to deal with overshoot and collapse has also been important to me. Many people claim that increasing energy efficiency in building sustainable technology is part of the plan to reduce overshoot. This is a logical fallacy being that technology use is causing ecological overshoot in the first place. Building more of it will not reduce overshoot no matter how efficient it is. It is important to realize that if overshoot is not reduced, all of its symptoms, all of its symptom predicaments cannot be reduced either. I have published various articles containing material regarding artificial intelligence, why it really isn't intelligence, and how much energy it requires. Before going any further into why AI won't save us, let's recap the key point of the last paragraph. Building more technology and or technological devices will not reduce overshoot. A very common idea now heard around the world is net zero emissions. The situation here is that carbon emissions are being blamed for climate change. So the idea is based upon reducing emissions and capturing carbon already in the atmosphere or preventing it from being released in the first place. The trouble comes into focus when one realizes that ecological overshoot is the predicament causing both climate change and emissions, which signifies that until and unless overshoot is reduced, neither climate change nor emissions will be reduced. Once again, technology use in the form of different versions of the above energy transition 
combined with some form of carbon capture figures into the plans, none of which will help because of what I have already outlined in the above three paragraphs in the two dozen of his previous essays that are linked over. Many different ideas discuss reversing or stopping climate change or overshoot in more advanced discussions. Recapping what we already know from all of the above, none of those ideas will reverse or stop overshoot. So they will likewise not reverse or stop climate change. Symptom predicaments of overshoot like climate change are intimately connected to overshoot and cannot be reduced separately, period. Also, the idea of reversing or stopping any symptom predicament of overshoot can be safely ruled out until overshoot is reversed and stopped. Our behavior of using technology is what is causing overshoot. So, any claims of using technology to reduce, reverse, or stop overshoot can also be safely ruled out. Ain't gonna happen regardless of whether the ideas were facilitated by AI, robots, and or other technological devices. One idea I, you know, talking about from the hopium meter going from silly to batshit crazy, one idea I see repeated over and over again is, and, and this you see in medium.com, I'm embarrassed to admit, uh, is that of developing a new sustainable civilization or some variation thereof. And, and then he has links into some of that shit. This, you know, sustainable civilization is an oxymoron. No such thing exists now or ever will exist. Civilization is irredeemable and has been unsustainable since the beginning, resting upon the foundation of technology use, especially that of agriculture. Harvesting surplus energy is at the root of what allowed us to begin multiplying. Hmm. And overshooting our carrying capacity of the land surrounding us. Hmm. Technology use necessarily reduces and removes negative feedbacks which once kept our numbers in check, in balance with the rest of nature. Because of this simple fact, technology use actually causes population growth, which then causes more technology use, and the two of them together act as a self-reinforcing positive feedback loop causing overshoot, which in turn causes all the symptom predicaments. So, the idea of developing a new civilization starts with a flawed idea at the very start. All of these labels, clean, green, renewable, and sustainable, etc., are really nothing more than narratives developed to try to sell people on the ideas behind using 
more technology to tackle the issues technology use has caused. There are literally hundreds of intentional communities, eco-villages, transition towns, 15-minute cities, and the like around the globe. These places do have various features that attempt to imitate sustainable living, but none of them, none of them actually are truly sustainable. Additional articles regarding various examples of these types of sustainable towns can be found here and here and here, and then he links all those. Unfortunately, all of them are based upon technology use, meaning that eventually they all lead to the exact same self-reinforcing positive feedback loop, can you say civilization, that has brought us to the point in time in the first place. To be sure, there are far better examples of sustainable living. Of course, most people living within industrial civilization today cannot fathom living like the Yanomami. The trouble with all forms of so-called sustainable towns is that they function within the confines of industrial civilization and suffer all the same ills caused by overshoot and its symptom predicaments as those outside of these towns suffer, can you say, climate change, pollution lighting, etc. Last but not least, what about human ingenuity? The myth of human supremacy and or human progress is alive and well with some folks, unfortunately. If one takes all the different ideas above and looks at them collectively, a particular theme sticks out like a sore thumb. That theme is what developed into the fantasies, myths, and fairy tale articles. Maybe that's uh, what, the, what I read from Eric uh, recently, the fantasies, myths, and fairy tales uh, three-part series. This shows definitively just how powerful human denial of reality and optimism bias truly are, where our beliefs actually trump reality at least in our minds. Tom Murphy came out with a new article the other day which really explains things extremely well. And more, it more or less outlines the Watiko thinking which is at the heart of all these ideas to begin with. I think I might have read that article back when it came out. So many false beliefs, so little time to work them all out as being false. Do you ever wonder how people will think once they discover the aspects that we, those of us who read this type of material and understand the implications, know to be true? This article points out this reality and examines the <clears throat> resentment that follows. And so he links you uh, to Tom's article, which I think might be the one I've read. <coughs> well, I said I would read until my first coffee collapse. <clears throat> okay, we're going to try to finish this out, guys. Way too many people do not comprehend. <clears throat> Way too many people, including 
scientists do not comprehend the rate of change that is occurring, we're not going to get into a Michael Mann rant talking about clueless moron scientists who do not comprehend the rate of change that is occurring combined with the fact that this is exponential change, not linear change. Many people likewise do not appear to realize that we will be unable to adapt to these changes due to these rates of changes for which there is no real measuring stick due to the fact that our rates of release of greenhouse gases has practically no precedent in the entire geologic history of the planet. Going back to previous mass extinctions, we can see just how vulnerable we are to the changes which are occurring now due mainly to how vulnerable all the species we depend on are to these changes. By the way, then, 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 then he goes and links you to some videos. I'm, I'm sure Michael Mann would absolutely love this guy. <clears throat> Many people seem to have this idea that we can use the ideas above to create some sort of new sustainable civilization without realizing that no such thing is actually possible. Ecological collapse is occurring now, meaning that the predicament we f the predicaments plural we face preclude the possibility that these ideas can be utilized long term. They are ideas that can be utilized today but will lack the resources, the surplus energy, and the resilience necessary to maintain communities in the future. For instance, if you decided to move to the boreal forest of Canada to escape the heat further south in North America, what happens after industrial civilization collapses and a drought wipes out your harvest for the year? Worse even, what happens if a wildfire develops and wipes out your entire community? What happens if a disease, you can play this, uh, this what happens game uh, all the time. Uh, these are new hazards <clears throat> which they have never experienced before. People need to realize so I said, whenever you see the words need to realize, it ain't going to happen. People need to, but it, they are not going to realize that the predicaments we face are global in nature. One may escape temporarily from a particular threat, but new threats will emerge that were not planned on. Ultimately, there truly is no escape from overshoot and its symptom predicaments. And this article from Alan Urban points this out in spades. I probably read this article, just a short quote from Alan Urban. We are not doomed because of climate change, resource depletion, or biodiversity loss. We are doomed because human nature made those things inevitable, close quote. It is very important to realize this simple but immutable fact that this is who and what we are as a species. It really does not matter who and what we are as individuals. This is about our activities collectively and our effect on the rest of the biosphere as a result. Once again, it really pays off to comprehend precisely 
how we arrived at this point in time to understand why all these ideas that are fostered by well-meaning people and groups will not change the outcome in any appreciable way of the predicaments we face. While I have attempted to point out our lack of agency with regards to this many times, most people would rather hold on to their beliefs than actually look at the facts. They suffer from denial of reality, and I am calling them collapse deniers. They are deniers of the reality of collapse. They suffer from denial of reality, just like Alan Urban said in the above article. This is the topic for my next article, how ignorance and stupidity provide this environment of denial that prevents a wider movement toward reducing overshoot voluntarily, which ain't going to happen, which rules out degrowth as yet another idea which will go nowhere. Although my complaint with that movement is that it does not specifically target technology use, the very cause of overshoot in the first place. Until then, live now. Live now. And that is all you can do is get out there and enjoy chippy chasing while you still can. And live now because you never know when the pneumonia wolf outside your door is going to come get you. Anyway, guys, uh, it is going to be 46 here tomorrow night. Saturday night, 46. Tuesday, 96 degrees in Ithaca, New York. 46, Saturday night, 96 on Tuesday. Get out there and enjoy it while you still can. And uh, maybe my voice is back. Sorry to tell you. My guys. All right, little dog. Did you survive the first rant in almost a month? I say, Pop, I can't believe we're doing this shit again.